Hadith 65 Narrated Abdullah bin Umar, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Good will remain, as a permanent quality, in the foreheads of horses till the day of resurrection. Hadith 66 Narrated Urwah bin Jad, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Good will remain, as a permanent quality, in the foreheads of horses till the day of resurrection. Hadith 67 Narrated Anas bin Malik, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, There is a blessing in the foreheads of horses. Hadith 68 Narrated Urwah al Bariki, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Good will remain, as a permanent quality, in the foreheads of horses, for jihad, till the day of resurrection, for they bring about either a reward, in the hereafter, or, war, booty, in this world. Hadith 69 Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, If somebody keeps a horse in Allah's cause motivated by his faith in Allah and his belief in his promise, then he will be rewarded on the day of resurrection for what the horse has eaten or drunk and for its dung and urine. Hadith 70 Narrated Abdullah bin Abi Qatada, from his father, Abu Qatada went out, on a journey, with Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, but he was left behind with some of his companions who were in the state of Ihram. He himself was not in the state of Ihram. They saw an Onager before he could see it. When they saw the Onager, they did not speak anything till Abu Qatada saw it. So, he rode over his horse called Al Jarada and requested them to give him his lash, but they refused. So, he himself took it and then attacked the Onager and slaughtered it. He ate of its meat and his companions ate, too, but they regretted their eating. When they met the Prophet, they asked him about it, and he asked, Have you some of its meat, left, with you? Abu Qatada replied, Yes, we have its leg with us. So, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, took and ate it. Hadith 71 Narrated Sahal, in our garden there was a horse belonging to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, called Al-Luhaif or Al-Luqaif. Hadith 72 Narrated Mu'ad, I was a companion rider of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, on a donkey called Ufayr. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, asked, O Mu'ad. Do you know what Allah's right on his slaves is, and what the right of his slaves on him is? I replied, Allah and his apostle know better. He said, Allah's right on his slaves is that they should worship him, alone, and should not worship any besides him. And slaves' right on Allah is that he should not punish him who worships none besides him. I said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Should I not inform the people of this good news? He said, Do not inform them of it, lest they should depend on it, absolutely. Hadith 73 Narrated Anas bin Malik, Once there was a feeling of fright in Medina, so the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, borrowed a horse belonging to us called Mandub, and he rode away on it. When the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, returned, he said, I have not seen anything of fright, and I found it, that is, this horse, very fast. Hadith 74 Narrated Abdullah bin Umar, I heard the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, saying, Evil omen is in three things, the horse, the woman, and the house. Hadith 75 Narrated Sahul bin Sa'd as Sa'idi, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, If there is any evil omen in anything, then it is in the woman, the horse, and the house. Hadith 76 Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Horses are kept for one of three purposes, for some people they are a source of reward, for some others they are a means of shelter and for some others they are a source of sins. The one for whom they are a source of reward, is he who keeps a horse for Allah's cause, that is, jihad, tying it with a long tether on a meadow or in a garden, 
with the result that whatever it eats from the area of the meadow or the garden where it is tied will be counted as good deeds for his benefit, and if it should break its rope and jump over one or two hillocks then all its dung and its footmarks will be written as good deeds for him. And if it passes by a river and drinks water from it even though he had no intention of watering it, even then he will get the reward for its drinking. As for the man for whom horses are a source of sins, he is the one who keeps a horse for the sake of pride and pretense and showing enmity for Muslims, such a horse will be a source of sins for him. When Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, was asked about donkeys, he replied, Nothing has been revealed to me about them except this unique, comprehensive verse, then anyone who does an atoms, or a small ants, weight of good shall see it, and anyone who does an atoms, or a small ants, weight of evil, shall see it. Surah 101, Ayat 7-8 Hadith 77 Narrated Muslim from Abu Aqil from Abu al-Mutawakkil an naji I called on Jabir bin Abdullah al-Ansari and said to him, Relate to me what you have heard from Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. He said, I accompanied him on one of the journeys. Abu Aqil said, I do not know whether that journey was for the purpose of jihad or umrah. When we were returning, Jabir continued, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, whoever wants to return earlier to his family, should hurry up. We set off and I was on a black red tainted camel having no defect, and the people were behind me. While I was in that state, the camel stopped suddenly, because of exhaustion. On that, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said to me, O Jabir, wait. Then he hit it once with his lash and it started moving on a fast pace. He then said, Will you sell the camel? I replied in the affirmative. When we reached Medina, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, went to the mosque along with his companions. I, too, went to him after tying the camel on the pavement at the mosque gate. Then I said to him, this is your camel. He came out and started examining the camel and saying, The camel is ours. Then the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, sent some awak, that is, an amount, of gold saying, Give it to Jabir. Then he asked, Have you taken the full price, of the camel? I replied in the affirmative. He said, Both the price and the camel are for you. Hadith 78 Narrated on us bin Malik, there was a feeling of fright in Medina, so the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, borrowed a horse called Mandub belonging to Abu Tulha and mounted it. On his return, he said, I did not see anything of fright, and I found this horse very fast. Hadith 79 Narrated Ibn Umar, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, fixed two shares for the horse and one share for its rider from the war booty. Hadith 80 Narrated Abu Ishaq, somebody asked al Bara bin Azib, did you flee deserting Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, during the battle of Hunayn? al Bara replied, but Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, did not flee. The people of the tribe of Hawazan were good archers. When we met them, we attacked them, and they fled. When the Muslims started collecting the war booty, the pagans faced us with arrows, but Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, did not flee. No doubt, I saw him on his white mule and Abu Sufyan was holding its reins and the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was saying, I am the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, in truth, I am the son of Abdul Muttalib. Hadith 81 Narrated Ibn Umar, when the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, put his feet in the stirrup and the she-camel got up carrying him, he would start reciting Tulbiya at the mosque of Dul Hulaifa. Hadith 82 Narrated on us, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, met them, that is, the people, while he was riding an unsaddled horse with his sword slung over his shoulder. Hadith 83 Narrated on us bin Malik once the people of Medina were frightened, so the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, rode a horse belonging to Abu Tulha and it ran slowly, or was of narrow paces. When he returned, he said, 
I found your, that is, Abu Tulha's, horse very fast. After that the horse could not be surpassed in running. Hadith 84 Narrated Abdullah bin Umar, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, arranged for a horse race amongst the horses that had been made lean to take place between al hafya and Thaniyat al wada that is, names of two places, and the horses which had not been made lean from a Thaniyat to the mosque of Bani Zuraik. I was also amongst those who took part in that horse race. Sufyan, a sub-narrator, said, the distance between al hafya and Thaniya al wada is five or six miles, and between Thaniya and the mosque of Bani Zuraik is one mile. Hadith 85 Narrated Abdullah, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, arranged for a horse race of the horses which had not been made lean, the area of the race was from Athania to the mosque of Bani Zuraik. The sub-narrator said, Abdullah bin Umar was amongst those who participated in that horse race. Hadith 86 Narrated Abu Ishaq from Musa bin Uqba from Nafi from Ibn Umar, who said, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, arranged a horse race amongst the horses that had been made lean, letting them start from al hafya and their limit, distance of running, was up to Thaniyat al wada I asked Musa, what was the distance between the two places? Musa replied, six or seven miles. He arranged a race of the horses which had not been made lean, sending them from Thaniyat al wada and their limit was up to the mosque of Bani Zuraik. I asked, what was the distance between those two places? He replied, one mile or so. Ibn Umar was amongst those who participated in that horse race. Hadith 87 Narrated on us, the she-camel of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was called al udba Hadith 88 Narrated on us, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, had a she-camel called al udba which could not be excelled in a race. Humayd, a sub-narrator said, or could hardly be excelled. Once, a Bedouin came riding a camel below six years of age which surpassed it, that is, al udba in the race. The Muslims felt it so much that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, noticed their distress. He then said, It is Allah's law that he brings down whatever rises high in the world. Hadith 89 Narrated Umar bin al-Harith, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, did not leave anything behind him after his death except a white mule, his arms and a piece of land which he left to be given in charity. Hadith 90 Narrated al bara that a man asked him, O Abu Umara, Did you flee on the day, of the battle, of Hunayn? He replied, No, by Allah, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, did not flee, but the hasty people fled and the people of the tribe of Hawazan attacked them with arrows, while the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was riding his white mule, and Abu Sufyan bin al harith was holding its reins, and the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was saying, I am the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, in truth, I am the son of Abdul Muttalib. Hadith 91 Narrated Aisha, the mother of the faithful believers, I requested the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, to permit me to participate in jihad, but he said, your jihad is the performance of Hajj. Hadith 92 Narrated Aisha, the mother of the faithful believers, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was asked by his wives about jihad and he replied, the best jihad, for you, is, the performance of, Hajj. Hadith 93 Narrated on us, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, went to the daughter of Milhan and reclined there, and slept, and then, woke up, smiling. She asked, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. What makes you smile? He replied, I dreamt that, some people amongst my followers were sailing on the green sea in Allah's cause, resembling kings on thrones. She said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Invoke Allah to make me one of them. He said, O Allah. 
let her be one of them. Then he, slept again and woke up and, smiled. She asked him the same question and he gave the same reply. She said, invoke Allah to make me one of them. He replied, you will be amongst the first group of them, you will not be amongst the last. Later on, she married Abadah bin Us Samit and then she sailed on the sea with Bint Karaza, Muawiyah's wife, for jihad. On her return, she mounted her riding animal, which threw her down breaking her neck, and she died on falling down. Hadith 94 Narrated Aisha, whenever the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, intended to proceed on a journey, he used to draw lots amongst his wives and would take the one upon whom the lot fell. Once, before setting out for jihad, he drew lots amongst us and the lot came to me, so I went with the Prophet, and that happened after the revelation of the verse of hijab, that is, veiling. Hadith 95 Narrated on us, on the day, of the battle, of Uhud, when, some, people retreated and left the Prophet, I saw Aisha bint Abu Bakr and Umm Sulaim, with their robes tucked up so that the bangles around their ankles were visible, hurrying with their water skins, in another narration it is said, carrying the water skins on their backs. Then they would pour the water in the mouths of the people, and return to fill the water skins again, and come back again to pour water in the mouths of the people. Hadith 96 Narrated Thalabah bin Abi Malik, Umar bin al-Khattab distributed some garments amongst the women of Medina. One good garment remained, and one of those present with him said, O chief of the believers! Give this garment to your wife, the grand daughter of Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. They meant Umm Kulthum, the daughter of Ali. Umar said, Umm Salit has more right to have it. Umm Salit was amongst those Ansari women who had given the pledge of allegiance to Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Umar said, she, that is, Umm Salit, used to carry the water skins for us on the day of Uhud. Hadith 97 Narrated our Rubai bin Muawid, we were in the company of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, providing the wounded with water and treating them, and bringing the killed to Medina, from the battlefield. Hadith 98 Narrated our Rubai bin Muawid, we used to take part in holy battles with the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, by providing the people with water and serving them, and bringing the killed and the wounded back to Medina. Hadith 99 Narrated Abu Musa, Abu Amir was hit with an arrow in his knee, so I went to him and he asked me to remove the arrow. When I removed it, the water started dribbling from it. Then I went to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and told him about it. He said, O oh Allah! Forgive Ubaid Abu Amir. Hadith 100 Narrated Aisha, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was vigilant one night and when he reached Medina, he said, Would that a pious man from my companions guard me tonight? Suddenly, we heard the clatter of arms. He said, Who is that? He, the newcomer, replied, I am Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas and have come to guard you. So, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, slept, that night. Hadith 101 Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Let the slave of Dinar and Dirham, and of Katifa and Kamisa, that is, money and luxurious clothes, perish, for he is pleased if these things are given to him, and if not, he is displeased. Hadith 102 Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Let the slave of Dinar and Dirham, of Katifa and Kamisa perish, as he is pleased if these things are given to him, and if not, he is displeased. Let such a person perish and relapse, and if he is pierced with a thorn, let him not find anyone to take it out for him. Paradise is for him who holds the reins of his horse to strive in Allah's cause, with his hair unkempt and feet covered with dust, if he is appointed in the vanguard, he is perfectly satisfied with his post of guarding, and if he is appointed in the rearward, he accepts his post with satisfaction. He is so simple and unambiguous that, 
if he asks for permission he is not permitted, and if he intercedes, his intercession is not accepted. Hadith 103 Narrated on us, I was in the company of Jarir bin Abdullah on a journey, and he used to serve me though he was older than I. Jarir said, I saw the Ansar doing a thing, that is, showing great reverence to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, for which I have vowed that whenever I meet any of them, I will serve him. Hadith 104 Narrated Anas bin Malik, I went along with the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, to Kaibar so as to serve him. Later on, when the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, returned, he, on seeing the Uhud mountain, said, This is a mountain that loves us and is loved by us. Then he pointed to Medina with his hand saying, O Allah! I make the area which is in between Medina's two mountains a sanctuary, as Abraham made Makkah a sanctuary. O Allah! Bless us in our saw and mud, that is, units of measuring. Hadith 105 Narrated on us, we were with the Prophet, on a journey, and the only shade one could have was the shade made by one's own garment. Those who fasted did not do any work, and those who did not fast served the camels and brought the water on them and treated the sick and, wounded. So, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Today, those who were not fasting took, all, the reward. Hadith 106 Narrated Abu Hurairah, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Charity is obligatory every day on every joint of a human being. If one helps a person in matters concerning his riding animal by helping him to ride it or by lifting his luggage onto it, all this will be regarded as charity. A good word, and every step one takes to offer the compulsory congregational prayer is regarded as charity, and guiding somebody on the road is regarded as charity. Hadith 107 Narrated Sahul bin Sa'd as Sa'idi, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, to guard Muslims from infidels in Allah's cause for one day is better than the world and whatever is on its surface, and a place in paradise as small as that occupied by the whip of one of you is better than the world and whatever is on its surface, and a morning's or an evening's journey which a slave, person, travels in Allah's cause is better than the world and whatever is on its surface. Hadith 108 Narrated on us bin Malik, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said to Abu Tulha, Choose one of your boy servants to serve me in my expedition to Kaibar. So, Abu Tulha took me, letting me ride behind him while I was a boy nearing the age of puberty. I used to serve Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, when he stopped to rest. I heard him saying repeatedly, O oh Allah! I seek refuge with you from distress and sorrow, from helplessness and laziness, from miserliness and cowardice, from being heavily in debt and from being overcome by men. Then we reached Kaibar, and when Allah enabled him to conquer the fort, of Kaibar, the beauty of Safiyah bint Huyai bin Aktub was described to him. Her husband had been killed while she was a bride. So, Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, selected her for himself and took her along with him till we reached a place called Sa'd as Sabah where her menses were over and he took her for his wife. Hais, a kind of dish, was served on a small leather sheet. Then Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, told me to call those who were around me. So, that was the marriage banquet of Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, and Safiyah. Then we left for Medina. I saw Allah's Apostle folding a cloak round the hump of the camel so as to make a wide space for Safiyah, to sit on behind him. He sat beside his camel letting his knees for Safiyah to put her feet on so as to mount the camel. Then, we proceeded till we approached Medina, he looked at Uhud, mountain, and said, This is a mountain which loves us and is loved by us. Then he looked at Medina and said, O oh Allah! I make the area between its, that is, Madinas, two mountains a sanctuary as Abraham made Makkah a sanctuary. O oh Allah! Bless them, that is, the people of Medina, in their mood and saw, that is, 
measures. Hadith 109 Narrated on us bin Malik, Um Haram told me that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, one day took a midday nap in her house. Then he woke up smiling. Um Haram asked, O oh Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. What makes you smile? He replied, I was astonished to see, in my dream, some people amongst my followers on a sea voyage looking like kings on the thrones. She said, O oh Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Invoke Allah to make me one of them. He replied, You are amongst them. He slept again and then woke up smiling, and said the same as before twice or thrice. And she said, O oh Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Invoke Allah to make me one of them. And he said, You are amongst the first batch. Ubadah bin Us Samit married her, that is, Umm Haram, and then he took her for jihad. When she returned, an animal was presented to her to ride, but she fell down and her neck was broken. Hadith 110 Narrated Musab bin Sa'd, once Sa'd, bin Abi Waqqas, thought that he was superior to those who were below him in rank. On that, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, You gain no victory or livelihood except through, the blessings and invocations of, the poor amongst you. Hadith 111 Narrated Abu Sa'id al-Qudri, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, A time will come when groups of people will go for jihad and it will be asked, Is there anyone amongst you who has enjoyed the company of the Prophet? The answer will be, Yes. Then they will be given victory, by Allah, because of him. Then a time will come when it will be asked, Is there anyone amongst you who has enjoyed the company of the companions of the Prophet? It will be said, Yes, and they will be given victory, by Allah. Then a time will come when it will be said, Is there anyone amongst you who has enjoyed the company of the companions of the companions of the Prophet? It will be said, Yes, and they will be given victory, by Allah. Hadith 112 Narrated Sahul bin Sa'd as Sa'idi, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, and the pagans faced each other and started fighting. When Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, returned to his camp and when the pagans returned to their camp, somebody talked about a man amongst the companions of Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, who would follow and kill with his sword any pagan going alone. He said, nobody did his job, that is, fighting, so properly today as that man. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, indeed, he is amongst the people of the, hell, fire. A man amongst the people said, I shall accompany him, to watch what he does. Thus he accompanied him, and wherever he stood, he would stand with him, and wherever he ran, he would run with him. Then the brave man got wounded seriously and he decided to bring about his death quickly. He planted the blade of the sword in the ground directing its sharp end towards his chest between his two breasts. Then he leaned on the sword and killed himself. The other man came to Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, and said, I testify that you are Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, asked, what has happened? He replied, It is about, the man whom you had described as one of the people of the, hell, fire. The people were greatly surprised at what you said, and I said, I will find out his reality for you. So, I came out seeking him. He got severely wounded, and hastened to die by slanting the blade of his sword in the ground directing its sharp end towards his chest between his two breasts. Then he eased on his sword and killed himself. Then Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, A man may seem to the people as if he were practicing the deeds of the people of paradise while in fact he is from the people of the hell fire, another may seem to the people as if he were practicing the deeds of the people of hell, fire, while in fact he is from the people of paradise. Hadith 113 Narrated Salamah bin al-Aqwa, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, passed by some people of the tribe of Bani Aslam who were practicing archery. 
The Prophet said, O Bunny Ismail! Practice archery, as your father Ismail was a great archer. Keep on throwing arrows, and I am with Bunny so and so. So one of the parties ceased throwing. Allah's Apostle said, Why do you not throw? They replied, How should we throw while you are with them, that is, on their side? On that, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Throw, and I am with all of you. Hadith 114 Narrated Abu Usaid, on the day, of the battle, of Badr, when we stood in rows against, the army of, Quraysh and they stood in rows against us, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, when they do come near you, throw arrows at them. Hadith 115 Narrated Abu Hurairah, while some Ethiopians were playing in the presence of the Prophet, Umar came in, picked up a stone and hit them with it. On that, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, O Umar! Allow them, to play. Mamar, the sub-narrator, added that they were playing in the mosque. Hadith 116 Narrated Anas bin Malik, Abu Tulha and the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to shield themselves with one shield. Abu Tulha was a good archer, and when he threw, his arrows, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, would look at the target of his arrows. Hadith 117 Narrated Sahal, when the helmet of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was smashed on his head and blood covered his face and one of his front teeth got broken, Ali brought the water in his shield and Fatima, the Prophet's daughter, washed him. But when she saw that the bleeding increased more by the water, she took a mat, burnt it, and placed the ashes on the wound of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and so the blood stopped oozing out. Hadith 118 Narrated Umar, the properties of Bani An-Nadir which Allah had transferred to his apostle as Fa'ibudi, were not gained by the Muslims with their horses and camels. The properties therefore, belonged especially to Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, who used to give his family their yearly expenditure and spend what remained thereof on arms and horses to be used in Allah's cause. Hadith 119 Narrated Ali, I never saw the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, saying, Let my parents sacrifice their lives for you, to any man after Sa'd. I heard him saying, to him, Throw, the arrows. Let my parents sacrifice their lives for you. Hadith 120 Narrated Aisha, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, came to my house while two girls were singing beside me the songs of Boath, a story about the war between the two tribes of the Ansar, that is, Khazraj and Aus, before Islam. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, reclined on the bed and turned his face to the other side. Abu Bakr came and scolded me and said protestingly, Instrument of Satan in the presence of Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him? Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, turned his face towards him and said, Leave them. When Abu Bakr became inattentive, I waved the two girls to go away and they left. It was the day of Eid when black people used to play with leather shields and spears. Either I requested Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, or he himself asked me whether I would like to see the display. I replied in the affirmative. Then he let me stand behind him and my cheek was touching his cheek and he was saying, Carry on, O Bunny Arfida, that is, black people. When I got tired, he asked me if that was enough. I replied in the affirmative and he told me to leave. Hadith 121 Narrated on us, the Prophet was the best and the bravest amongst the people. Once the people of Medina got terrified at night, so they went in the direction of the noise, that terrified them. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, met them, on his way back, after he had found out the truth. He was riding an unsaddled horse belonging to Abu Tulha and a sword was hanging by his neck, and he was saying, Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. He further said, I found it, that is, the horse, very fast, or said, This horse is very fast. 
Hadith 122 Narrated Abu Umama, some people conquered many countries and their swords were decorated neither with gold nor silver, but they were decorated with leather, lead and iron. Hadith 123 Narrated Jabir bin Abdullah, that he proceeded in the company of Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, towards nudged to participate in a Ghazwa, holy battle. When Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, returned, he too returned with him. Midday came upon them while they were in a valley having many thorny trees. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, and the people dismounted and dispersed to rest in the shade of the trees. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, rested under a tree and hung his sword on it. We all took a nap and suddenly we heard Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, calling us. We woke up, to see a Bedouin with him. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, This Bedouin took out my sword while I was sleeping and when I woke up, I found the unsheathed sword in his hand and he challenged me saying, Who will save you from me? I said thrice, Allah. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, did not punish him but sat down. Hadith 124 Narrated Sahal, that he was asked about the wound of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, on the day, of the battle, of Uhud. He said, the face of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was wounded and one of his front teeth was broken and the helmet over his head was smashed. Fatima washed off the blood while Ali held water. When she saw that the bleeding was increasing continuously, she burnt a mat, of date palm leaves, till it turned into ashes which she put over the wound and thus the bleeding ceased. Hadith 125 Narrated Umar bin al-Harith, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, did not leave behind him after his death, anything except his arms, his white mule, and a piece of land at Kaibar which he left to be given in charity. Hadith 126 Narrated Jabir, as above. Narrated Jabir bin Abdullah, that he participated in a Ghazwa, holy battle, in the company of Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Midday came upon them while they were in a valley having many thorny trees. The people dispersed to rest in the shade of the trees. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, rested under a tree, hung his sword on it, and then slept. Then he woke up to find near to him a man whose presence he had not noticed before. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, This, man, took my sword, out of its scabbard, and said, Who will save you from me? I replied, Allah. So, he put the sword back into its scabbard, and you see him sitting here. Anyhow, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, did not punish him. Hadith 127 Narrated Abu Qatada, that he was in the company of Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, and when they had covered a portion of the road to Makkah, he and some of the companions lagged behind. The latter were in a state of ihram, while he was not. He saw an onager and rode his horse and requested his companions to give him his lash but they refused. Then he asked them to give him his spear but they refused, so he took it himself, attacked the onager, and killed it. Some of the companions of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, ate of it, while some others refused to eat. When they caught up with Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, they asked him about that, and he said, that was a meal Allah fed you with. It is also said that Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, asked, have you got something of its meat? Hadith 128 Narrated Ibn Abbas, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, while in a tent, on the day of the Battle of Badr, said, O Allah! I ask you the fulfillment of your covenant and promise. O Allah! If you wish, to destroy the believers, you will never be worshipped after today. Abu Bakr caught him by the hand and said, this is sufficient, O Allah's Apostle. You have asked Allah pressingly. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was clad in his armor at that time.
He went out, saying to me, Their multitude will be put to flight and they will show their backs. Nay, but the hour is their appointed time, for their full recompense, and that hour will be more grievous and more bitter, than their worldly failure. Surah 54, Ayat 45-46 Khalid said that was on the day of the Battle of Butter. Hadith 129 Narrated Aisha, Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, died while his, iron, armor was mortgaged to a Jew for thirty saws of barley. Hadith 130 Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, the example of a miser and the one who gives in charity, is like the example of two men wearing iron cloaks so tightly that their arms are raised forcibly towards their collarbones. So, whenever a charitable person wants to give in charity, his cloak spreads over his body so much so that it wipes out his traces, but whenever the miser wants to give in charity, the rings, of the iron cloak, come closer to each other and press over his body, and his hands get connected to his collarbones. Abu Huraira heard the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, saying, the miser then tries to widen it but in vain. Hadith 131 Narrated al mugira bin Shu'aba, Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, went out to answer the call of nature, and on his return I brought some water to him. He performed the ablution while he was wearing a shami cloak. He rinsed his mouth and washed his nose by putting water in it and then blowing it out, and washed his face. Then he tried to take out his hands through his sleeves but they were tight, so he took them out from underneath, washed them and passed wet hands over his head and over his leather socks. Hadith 132 Narrated on us, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, allowed Abdur Rahman bin Auf and Az Zubayr to wear silken shirts, because they had a skin disease causing itching. Hadith 133 Narrated on us, as above. Narrated on us, Abdur Rahman bin Auf and Az Zubayr complained to the Prophet, that is, about the lice, that caused itching, so he allowed them to wear silken clothes. I saw them wearing such clothes in a holy battle. Hadith 134. Narrated on us, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, allowed Abdur Rahman bin Auf and Az Zubayr bin Al Awam to wear silk. Hadith 135. Narrated on us, wearing of silk, was allowed to them, that is, Abdur Rahman and Az Zubayr, because of the itching they suffered from. Hadith 136. Narrated Umayyah ad Dumri, I saw the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, eating of a shoulder, of a sheep, by cutting from it, and then he was called to prayer and he prayed without repeating his ablution. Narrated Az Zuhri, as above, and added that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, put the knife down.